it certainly makes sense as to why wolves are such intriguing creatures. It's particularly obvious for dog lovers as wolves and dogs are very closely related, and it is only natural to feel a unique bond with them. That being said, wolves also conduct fascinating lives that are helpful for the environment. And that's why fun and intriguing facts about wolves will furthermore entertain any child who appears to have an appreciation for them. So what are you waiting for? Quickly subscribe to my channel and keep watching this video till the end. Here we begin. Number 5. Wolves are surprisingly diverse. The first fascinating fact about wolves is that the wolves are very diverse creatures you will ever find in the animal kingdom. The word wolf generally refers to the gray wolf or Canis lupus, the most widespread and knowledgeable wolf species still in existence. You will find that the gray wolves are widely recognized to have developed from the smaller Mossbach wolf, a now extinct canid found in Eurasia during the middle to late Pleistocene. Thanks to adventurous, adjustable predecessors, gray wolves have flourished for hundreds of thousands of years across enormous swaths of Eurasia and North America, spreading out into a wide variety of subspecies. There is still controversy over how broad that variety is, with scientists separating them into anywhere from 8 to 38 subspecies. In North America, these comprise the ghostly Arctic wolf, the eastern or timber wolf, the large northwestern wolf, and the small Mexican wolf, which some leaders contemplate as a distinct species. Furthermore, the enigmatic red wolf or C. rufus is a rare canid. This species is classified either as a particular species or as a subspecies of the gray wolf, with possible coyote ancestry in either case. The Eurasian wolf is the largest of numerous Old World subspecies and plentiful with the biggest range. If we talk about the others, they are the desert-dwelling Arabian wolf, the northerly tundra wolf, the high-elevation Himalayan wolf, and the plains-prowling Indian wolf. Aside from gray wolves, the genus Canis furthermore comprises closely corresponding species like the coyotes and golden jackals, as well as two other species generally known as wolves like the Ethiopian wolf or C. simensis and the African golden wolf or C. lupaster. Number 4. There used to be a lot more wolves. Here, in number 4, we will talk about how wolves are fewer nowadays than they were found earlier. It's unfortunate to witness that even with this diversity and the comparative abundance of gray wolves globally, Earth currently has far fewer wolves and fewer kids than it once did. Their population has decreased to an alarming level, and scientists have already warned about these situations. Well, we will discuss why this is so, and the answer might surprise you all. The fossil document has disclosed an array of interesting wolf and wolf-like species. For instance, the prominent dire wolf, better known as Anotian dyrus, and the hypercarnivorous senescians, or strange dogs, which may be the forebear of contemporary African wild dogs and holes. On top of natural extinctions in prehistoric times, we humans have started the war on gray wolves for centuries. They were so few left in many parts of the countries that they had to be protected under the Endangered Species Act. But sadly, the gray wolves are still thought to be endangered, and this clearly means that they could ultimately disappear from Earth. So, we can say that humans are much bigger danger than the wolves themselves to the people. Believe it or not, the gray wolf was once the most widely distributed mammal present on Earth, and if its extinction is not controlled, then there will come a day when we will be able to count the number of wolves with our fingers. This is according to the IUCN or International Union for Conservation of Nature, but persecution by people has decreased its range by about one-third. Surprisingly, several unique subspecies were lost along the way, including the Mississippi Valley Wolf, the Florida Black Wolf, the Great Plains Wolf, the Texas Wolf, and Old World species like the Sicilian Wolf, the Japanese Wolf, and the Hokkaido Wolf. Number 3. Dire Wolves May Not Have Been Wolves Coming to number 3, we will be talking about the dire wolves. The now extinct dire wolf was typical across North America until about 13,000 years ago, when much of the continent's megafauna disappeared amid natural climate differences. 
Dire wolves were similar in size to today's biggest gray wolves, but they had bone-crushing jaws and may have concentrated on big prey like mastodons, horses, bison, and ground sloths. Surprisingly, the dire wolf fossils suggest a powerful resemblance to the contemporary gray wolves based on morphological similarities. Scientists have long thought that the two were closely related. In early 2021, however, scientists again revealed some unexpected results after sequencing DNA from dire wolf subfossils. Dire wolves and gray wolves are only extremely distant cousins. They reported in the journal Nature, and their resemblances appear to be the outcome of convergent evolution instead of close relations. And that's why it is rightfully said that the dire wolf DNA is a highly divergent lineage that split from living canids 5.7 million years ago. Furthermore, there is no evidence of interbreeding with any living canid species. A senior author from the Ludwig Maximilian University, which is located in Munich, said that when they first began this study, they thought that dire wolves were just beefed up gray wolves, so they were surprised to know about how extremely genetically distinct they were, so much that they likely could not have interbred. Hybridization across Canis species is believed to be very common, implying that dire wolves were isolated in North America for a very long time to come to be so genetically specific. Number 2. Alpha Wolves Are Just Moms and Dads in number two, we will be discussing the alpha wolves. You will find that gray wolves generally live in packs of six to ten individuals, which are led by a dominant breeding duo. You may have heard someone refer to these pack commanders as alpha wolves, or males and females who supposedly receive dominance by battling within their packs, ultimately becoming the group's leaders and exclusive breeders. This perspective is widespread, and certainly, it is misleading. Many wolf specialists now contemplate that alpha wolf is an outdated term, contending that it doesn't accurately characterize the way a wolf pack works. One such specialist is L. David Meck, who is a renowned biologist, helped to popularize the notion decades ago, but now deters its use. We now understand alpha wolves are actually only parents, Meck explains, and the other pack partners are their offspring. Wolves frequently mate for life, and their family unit can comprise a blend of juveniles and young adults from multiple breeding seasons. Meck wrote, Alpha implies contending with others and becoming the top dog by winning a contest or battle. Yet most wolves who direct packs accomplish their position entirely by mating and delivering pups, which then evolve to be their pack. In other words, we can say that they are simply breeders or parents, and that's all we call them today. Number 1. Unlike many other species, the whole wolf pack raises pups together. In black bears, mountain lions, and a bunch of other species in the animal kingdom, adult males can be forceful toward and even kill their young, but not wolves. Yes, wolves are not like the other aggressive animals that we will ever find in the animal kingdom. In a wolf pack, all individuals, whether male or female, regurgitate for the cubs, care for the cubs, and put up the cubs. In fact, Females in the pack that aren't pregnant go through pseudo-pregnancies, so all these females feel like parenting, which is an enormous adaptation. Just like they hunt in packs as they are actually inefficient hunters, wolves also raise their younger ones together. Let's talk about another piece of proof that wolves subscribe to the it takes a village school of thought when raising their young. A scientist was working with a group of hand-raised wolves back in 1998. She was in with this wolf and he brought a deer leg over to her and put it on her feet. And that wolf looked at her and the scientist thought that this was bizarre. The scientist had never ever seen this happen. So she kind of tossed it off to the side. Again, the wolf looked at her and he went over and picked it up again, put it on her feet again, backed up and looked at the scientist. And one more time, the scientist tossed it aside and the wolf looked really frustrated. So the third time, the wolf put it on her feet, the scientist picked it up and faked eating it, and the wolf looked really satisfied and trotted away. What she found out later was that she was pregnant. She didn't even know, but that wolf did. He was feeding the scientist. So that's what happened. The wolf knew about the scientist being pregnant and was taking care of that. So that's all for now. What do you think about these amazing facts about wolves? Was it thrilling to know about those facts? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more.